Hello children, welcome back to today's edition of Bible Study. And today, today we're going to transition from Rehoboam to his son Abijah. Now Rehoboam was like his dad, and at the end of Solomon's reign, he started falling away from God. Rehoboam did the same. He simply fell away, started worshiping idols, did bad things. And what it says about Abijah is he followed in the footsteps of his father, who followed in the footsteps of his father. And I think Abijah had something like 14 wives and over 30 children. And wow, God's plan for marriage is one woman and one man for life. And Abijah is having 14 wives? Not nearly as much as his grandfather Solomon, but a lot. And he continued to worship idols. It's really strange because that's that's the account in one book. You see, he shows up in, in, in Kings and Chronicles, and in one of them it says, well, he worshipped other gods, and he sinned like his father. Now, in the other account, well, he is fighting Israel, and he fights Jeroboam, son of Nebad, if we remember that guy who Everybody after him just kept sinning, and if you're Jeroboam, son of Nebat, or referred to that, you know you did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So now you have this evil king, Abijah, that's over Judah, and you have this evil king, Jeroboam, son of Nebat, that's over Israel, and they're at war. And it says there's 500,000 people following Judah's Abijah, and you have 800,000 people following Jeroboam, son of Nebat. But it's really strange because Habijah keeps referring to Yahweh and keeps referring to the God of Israel and the one that is, is right and true and come home and I've got the priests with me and we're going to conquer you. And they end up winning. God grants them this victory and it's directly due to God, the scriptures say. And so here's what is strange is in one book, Abijah is all about idol worship, but in the other book, he's all about the one true God. So how does this work? Well, sometimes in our life, we kind of go up and down in our beliefs and what we do and how we do things. And that is life. You see, there was probably a point in Abijah's time that he really believed in, in Yahweh and wanted to follow God, the, the one that we follow. And then a lot of the other time, he wanted to follow these others. And so we can't be fence sitters. We can't be somebody that wants to follow God now and then follow somebody else later and then go back and forth and this way and then that way. No, no, we follow God alone because otherwise we'll fall into sin. We have to go fully in. We have to go all in. As what they say, and following God, and not just halfway. Because Abijah went halfway, and it turned out that wasn't enough. That wasn't enough. We can never go just halfway. So we're going to look at this halfway full way just a little bit more in story time just around the corner. We'll see you there. Boys and girls, it is time for story time. And we're going to learn how to decide right from wrong. Because Abijah obviously had a, a problem with this. Because, you know, he... he follow God when he went into battle, but that was like the only time it seems like, because it says he sinned like his father. We are going. And so today we're going to look at how to decide right and wrong, because we want to be more like King David and less like Rehoboam or King Abijah. So how do you decide right and wrong? Do you ever have trouble deciding whether something is right or wrong? As you grow up, you'll have to make this decision many times. There are some very easy questions you can ask yourself, though, that will help you decide what you should do. The only one who is, always knows what is right and wrong is God, but he has written the Bible to help us know what is right and wrong. So the first question to ask yourself when you're not sure what to do is, does the Bible say whether this is right or wrong? For example, you may really want to steal a piece of candy. Mmm, candy. Nice sweet treat. 
It looks so good, but then you remember what the Bible says. Thou shalt not steal. So you know that stealing is wrong and that you can't do it. Of course, you always have to read your Bible. Or you won't know what it says. Will you? The second good question is, would Jesus do this? Hmm. Sometimes you may not be able to think of a Bible verse that tells you what, to, what you would want to do. But you know that this is something Jesus would not do. Since we're supposed to try to be like Jesus, we should always act like we think how Jesus would act. We must try to do the things he would do and try not to do the things Jesus would not do. Jesus is a good example for us to follow, but we must also be good examples. So another question is, if I do this, will I be a good example to others? But what if no one will see us? The Bible teaches that at the end of the world, everything we've done, even the secret things, will be told about. So you should also ask yourself, would I mind if everybody knew I did this? Because someday, everyone will know. Another question the Bible teaches us to ask is, could this hurt my body? If the answer is yes, we shouldn't do it. A question you may already know and use is, would I want others to treat me this way? I should do the same nice things for others that I wish they would do for me. And I should not do to them anything I would not want them to do to me. Be kind to others. Sometimes a thing is fine to do at one time, but wrong to do at another time. The question here is, if I do this, am I putting God first, or am I putting myself first? For example, playing baseball is great, but not during worship times on Sunday or Wednesday. Can thank you can you think of any other examples like this? Last of all, if you're still not sure about something, don't do it. The Bible says that if you go ahead and do something when you think it might be wrong, then for you it is wrong. Let's look one more time at our list of questions. Does the Bible say it's wrong? Would Jesus do it? Am I being a good example? Would I want everyone to know that I did it? Could it hurt my body? Would I want it done to me? Is it putting God first? Am I sure about it? I think those are some great questions to ask. Now, for practice, think of something that you're not sure whether you should do. Then ask yourself each of the eight questions we've talked about. By practicing now, while we're young, soon it will become easy for you to decide what is right and what is wrong. Then even if you're somewhere all by yourself, you'll be able to do the right thing and make God proud of you. Those are some great questions to ask. Because if Abijah would have asked, does God like this? Does God want me to do it? He would have never worshipped idols. And he would have stayed true to the one true God. And I think this is huge, guys. We need to remember that it is God that matters. And what he wants, we should do. And these are things that you learn in Bible class. So make sure you come Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock here at the Eastwood Church of Christ at 2500 North Plum and Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Because your teachers are great and you're going to learn great things about how to live a good, godly life and be able to worship and praise and please the Father. And that's a huge deal. You guys are amazing. Remember, obey your parents and you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.